Um, I'm running for council because I think we have a lot of good things happening in Carrollton. Whether it's record low vacancy rates in our retail, office, uh, industrial spaces, whether it's record low response times by our first responders, whether it's booming sales and use tax proceeds coming back to the state that allows us to invest upwards of eight and ten million dollars in a given year back as pay as you go infrastructure improvements, whether it's um, whether it's the the uh, many amenities that we've been adding into the city. We just have a lot of good things happening in Carrollton, and that's why I'm running for mayor. My wife and I, Peggy Babbitt, up back here, very a very active volunteer in the school district as well. My wife and I and my children, Michael, who's at Texas Tech, um, Sarah, who's uh, a senior at Newman Smith High School, we've been very active as volunteers in the uh, in the community for a long time. I started as within my neighborhood association. Uh, I've only lived in Carrollton. I've only owned homes in Carrollton. Um, my wife and I married in Carrollton. We go to the church, the same church we got married in. Uh, my kids were baptized in that church, St. Catherine of Siena uh, in uh, Carrollton. And I'm all Carrollton. If, if you've seen me once, you've seen me a thousand times at various events. And so if you're thinking about engagement and what it how do you communicate with people, that's that's who I am. You get, you get me black and white. I'm here. Nothing to hide, okay? And so my point about this is why I'm running, who we are, what we believe in. We believe in in uh, letting our Carrollton pride shine. P for public safety, R for redevelopment, I for infrastructure, D for diversity, and E for economic development. I will touch on all those during this uh, visit tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Um, I grew up in this area. I see lots of familiar faces have been around here a lot. It's good to see old friends and, and get to see everyone again. So thank you for that. I, uh, I am Kevin Falconer running for mayor. We, uh, my wife, Susan, and I have lived in Carrollton for 26 years. Uh, it is, like Steve said, it is our home, the only place we've owned homes, and the place that we want to be, and we love it. Uh, we have three daughters who we raised in Carrollton. Uh, all three of those came up all the way through the CFBISD. I'm proud of the fact that they're all productive adults now. We've added a, a couple of son-in-laws to the fold, which is great. But most importantly, we added my grandson, Stoyan. So uh, he's seven years old, and I'm glad to show you pictures of him afterwards if you want to see him. But uh, grandparenting is great. But uh, I have uh, also been involved in the city for a long time. I love Carrollton, I love serving the city. I served two terms on the city council from 2009 to 2015. And prior to that, I served on five different boards and commissions for the city starting back in 1995 uh, until I got on city council in 2009. And I chaired three of those uh, boards, including chairing planning and zoning for five years, which was great experience. So I feel like it's a, it's a good opportunity now to to look at stepping into some big shoes, and that would be the, the shoes of Mayor Matthew Marchant. He's a good friend of mine. He's done a great job for us in the city, and uh, we are um, proud to have him as a great leader. I'd like to be that next leader, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to earning your vote and your respect. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the era of the factory-made politician is over. The people are taking back government, and I am leading the revolution. My name is Zul, and I am the next mayor of Carrollton, Texas. A lot of people ask me why I've been motivated to run for this position. I spent about 31 years in the city. I've grown up here. I've got my head busted. I fell in love. I've gone through college, and I've, I've had a, a slew of memories I carry with me every day. And um, I wish I could paint a peachy keen you know, theory of what's going on in our city right now, but I see a lot of things that are, are going in a bad direction. Um, you know, from rising property taxes to every time I turn on the news, I see lawsuits from the city getting sued by individuals, from a failed 911 call center that's, that's costing the taxpayer a million dollars a month of your tax money is getting wasted because of negligence and irresponsibility. The time to end that is now. I am the mayor, and I am the candidate for the future. My plan as mayor 
It's great. 100 new city jobs. I feel the best contribution the government can do for the citizens is to, to, to have them stay stably employed so they can have a source of income and they can spend that money in goods and services within the city. So it, city jobs always have the best benefits. So I definitely want to reach out and you know, reach out to all our citizens who need those opportunities and make sure they have them. I'll lower property taxes. I've devised a plan where I will, in small increments, reduce the property tax percentages every year I am as a mayor. So by the end of my first term, you will have $600 to $800 more in your pocket with a vote with me versus any other candidate. And money talks. I don't care what side you're on, left or right, blue or red, we're all united by the US dollar. And I guarantee you, with me as mayor, you'll have more of those in your pocket. You know what I saw the other day? I saw a panhandler. I've seen numerous panhandlers all over the city begging on the corner. And no one's doing anything about this. This is a disgrace, let me tell you. I was raised that you never get any kind of handouts in life. I work hard for everything. And yet, like any other candidate, I'm not taking any donations. You can buy merchandise you know, for my, for my campaign. That's how I'm supporting my campaign. I'm not taking any donations. I've never been given a handout in life, and I never will take one. Okay. Because that's that's how my grandfather's talking. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You're running into your time for the next question. We're going to start down there. And, and I know everyone who's listening right now is going to be like, oh, that's so boring. But we're going to start down there. And I know everyone who's sitting out in the audience was listening to the first panel goes, okay, my first question is, what is your goal? No, you all are running for mayor. Your first question is, what special expertise or skills are you bringing to the office of mayor? What do you think you should be the head honcho for the city of Carrollton? Mr. Muhammad, we'll start there and go this way. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, let me give you a little basic background about myself. Um, like I said, I grew up in Carrollton. I spent about 31 years here. I went to the University of North Texas. I graduated in 2006 with a degree in economics. Now, and I'm sure many people are familiar with the term of economics. It's basically the science of supply and demand. It's the overall blueprint on how our society functions. Um, but because of this information I've received in my degree, I can forecast things that you know in the future you know, we'll have to make adjustments for with funding, with you know creating brand new infrastructure, with, with the rapid population growth. We will have to accommodate these things. Uh, with the degree I have, I also have a background in city planning. So, you know, I, I can understand how the city functions in an overall sense. Everything is related, everything is uh, connected together. So, my expertise and plus my personality to, you know, I, I'm a very charismatic person, I've been told. I know that's kind of egotistical to say, but yeah, I get this from women all the time. They're all over me all the time. I, I, I can't help it, you know? Uh, but, you know, like, I, I, can, I, have a, I can build rapport with people. I, I think that's the first and foremost thing is having a personal, you know, personality where you can create you know, a, a bond with someone. And you know, all the mayors around the surrounding cities, I'll be happy to work with them. And we're all moving toward regionalization where we're pulling our resources together to save money. And I like this idea because I, I'm, I'm first and foremost for the taxpayer. I never want to see one dollar wasted of your money because it irritates me so much. My parents worked very, very hard to give me a good life in the city. And I know how hard the, you know, they built, they worked to put tax money into the city. And I will never let that go in vain. So yeah. I, I have a plan. That's my plan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, same question. What special expertise or skills are you going to bring to the office of mayor? Thank you. Well, there, there's several. First, um, I uh, bring experience. As I mentioned, I have extensive experience in the city. I've grown up in the area, so I know uh, the way around. I, uh, as we have already heard, we're going to have a very young council, a junior council. We're going to need some experience to know how <laughs> to make, make things happen. I have the most experience of any of the candidates in that regard. I also, uh, I have a, I'm an architect, I have an MBA. The architecture piece of that gives me a, a great vision. And I, I think in your mayor's seat, you want someone with great vision. And so beyond that, um, the MBA and the finance side, I am totally about fiscal responsibility. The one thing that I have is that I have a, a proven record in that regard. I served six years on city council during the Great Recession, by the way. The first time that Carrollton had declining revenues in, we don't, in, in decades was when I was on council. And there was significant pressure to raise taxes. Um, we were fortunate, and I was leading that way, that we did not do that on the 4-3 vote, but it was tough. I never supported a tax rate increase, and actually, I actually supported a tax rate decrease while I was on council, which was successful. So 
there's a lot of work that goes into that. So I think that, uh, and the, follow, the other is following. You want to have someone who has leadership and following behind them. I have an endorsement of Mayor Marchin as well as the majority of city council. I think that tells you what, what kind of following I have because you need to have in the mayor's seat someone who can consensus build, who can lead, and who can direct. So I'd say those are the things that I would bring to the table. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so my background is finance. I'm a finance guy. Um, uh, my undergraduate degree, I worked at Texas Instruments. Uh, I've worked at Fortune 500 companies all the way down to small startups. Um, I've got an MBA as well. Um, I think my, my proven track record on council is three straight years of tax rate decreases. Okay? The only three straight years that we've seen in Carroll. Okay? The other thing that I think that um, my finance background brings to me and my MBA uh, background brings me, to me is the ability to really look at the big picture. You know, it's important that as you're, as you're focusing on a budget, that you're looking at return on investment. Sometimes you do make investment to get a return. Sometimes you do bottoms up or zero-based budgeting. I had my own, from day one, when I first got on council, I had my own work sessions with, with city staff, and I went down through every single line on it. And I spoke loud and proud at, at that very first budget cycle when we've reduced taxes, by the way. Very first session, we reduced taxes. The very first time Carrollton has in the near, in the near term. Um, I spoke loud and proud about the state of our economy in, in Carrollton, the state of our budget in Carrollton. So it's, it's that experience in terms of business owner, own a small business, run businesses from Fortune 500, serving on boards of directors, satisfying neighborhood association needs, which can be quite daunting, uh, and serving on council, boards and commissions since the early 90s um, as well. So I have the experience. I also have the experience with the council that I'll be running, the greatest level of experience, because it's the council I'm serving with, right? Um, in addition with, we'll be having some new people coming in. So as you're looking at the level of experience, it's the recency of experience that's important. For one, I'm a pilot. You lose your license if you don't have recency of experience. I won't pull anybody's license tonight, but I'm just here to tell you that it's all about recency of experience. And I have the recency of experience with the council that we'll be serving with. I have the practical experience, and I have the budgeting experience, and I have the proven results to show it. The biggest issue facing Carrollton is managing our growth on one end and managing our redevelopment on the other. We have to have the infrastructure to, to manage to support the growth, and we have to have the infrastructure improvements to support our aging areas. We have to be able to manage growth and have pride in Carrollton, and the E in pride is really about economic development. The I in pride is about infrastructure. We have to redevelop, to redevelop our neighborhoods uh, and improve on the infrastructure so that our property values remain high, so that our, our, uh, our service levels can be, remain high, and we have to manage the growth on the north end, again, and take advantage of the regional growth that's happening with Nebraska Furniture Mart. The difference between us and Nebraska and, and the colony with Nebraska Furniture Mart is, is we get to we get to keep most of the sales and use proceeds we get from that area. All by all, all boats do indeed rise with the tide with that. We are seeing the growth up there. We're seeing job growth up there. About 1,300 drop jobs up there. And so the biggest challenges comes down to managing growth on the north, managing infrastructure and redevelopment citywide. Thank you. The biggest thing for Carrollton, like everyone else in this metroplex, we have a, a, a great community, a greater community in this metroplex that we have. But it means that we have extreme competitive pressure. Carrollton competes with every one of the communities around in the metroplex, Plano, Frisco, and uh, Coppell, all of them. We have to promote our brand. We have to be able to make ourselves different and differentiate ourselves. That is the single biggest thing that we need to do. And like uh, Steve said, that involves for us because we are very much landlocked. We're not, we're not growing lots. So for us, that's redevelopment. That's, 
that's uh, amenities and attractiveness, which is a huge part of my, uh, what we've changed while I was on eight years ago with council is making sure that we become attractive as a city. That is making sure that we are the safest city. So that is uh, for me, public safety is job number one. That is bringing restaurants and retail, making us a destination for that. I've been in the restaurant and retail industry for 30 years. I know how to do that. And that is holding the line on taxes while getting our property values up. And finally, the last thing I think we need to do is that we need to make sure that we manage our road construction so that we minimize the disruption to our, our residents. Thank you. Uh, what do you see as the biggest issue facing Carrollton and how do you expect to have an impact on that? Uh, the biggest issue I see facing Carrollton right now is inefficient government. Um, and let me elaborate on that. Uh, I see a lot of our money getting wasted as I've spoken before in our previous questions. I've seen a lot of construction projects just come to a halt without an explanation. Um, I don't know if you know about the Winco project over here on Josie and Trinity Mills. That's supposed to be a large grocery store. Now it's just an empty lot and it's an eyesore. So people come through, driving through, deciding if they're going to live in our city or not. That's you know what we're offering them to see. I want to change that. That area, I'm going to bring a new sporting goods store because I believe that's a big market. We have a lot of people here that enjoy their outdoor enthusiasts. They're either driving to Louisville, Addison, and other areas to spend their money. I want to bring something like that here in Carrollton so we can have something for all our people who enjoy the outdoors. Um, I, and I see a lot, you know, like I mentioned before, we've had a lot of lawsuits printed out in the last six, eight years. This has cost us millions of dollars. And I want to put an end to it because I, I can see that money going out to better uses instead of going to one individual. So with me as your mayor, I will put my foot down in any, any kind of city corruption, any kind of wasteful spending, and I will look out for your tax dollar like nobody else, like you are my family. And that's my plan. Thank you. I've already got that worked out. I live about five minutes down from City Hall, and I'm self-employed, so I'm available 24-7. My plan is I'm going to be in the office quite a bit. Um, I, I, in previous past, I've known some of the other mayors that had full-time jobs, so they're not there, and they're not accessible throughout the day like I will be. You're going to have my home phone number, you're going to have my cell phone number. Anytime you can contact me, I'll be there. And I'm going to enjoy it because I, I get a sense of fulfillment you know, from helping out the community. I, I was a Boy Scout in Troop 758. And uh, most of my best memories in life are from that. And it's, it's from growing up in this great country and, and serving the people. And I've learned so well. I still follow that promise to this day. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. I live by those laws. And it's made who I am here today. So uh, that's, you know, I'm going to be the most visible person there. You probably going to get sick of seeing me so much because, like, man, this mayor is always doing something. He's, I see him everywhere. But you know what? That's the type of person I am, and you're going to see a lot more of me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, how do you think you'll be a visible, accessible leader communicating with all segments of Carrollton? Sure. Uh, well, one thing is that, uh, similarly, I, uh, I'm an empty nester now. And uh, my wife is more than happy for me to be out of the house and, and, and visiting with other people besides her. So I will have, I've devoted uh, much of my time will be to city government. And I've proven that in the past with uh, being extremely active over a long period of time in the city. I think that uh, there's a lot of ways that we need to make sure. I, I'm promoting that I think we need a concierge type service. There's people in the city don't always know what to do or who to call or whatever. I think we need something that lets them be able to come in and say, I can, I don't know what to do, but what do I, where do I go? And, and that we can do, uh, they can come to a one-stop shop to get that kind of information. I think town halls can be good. I think that a more active way to do that is, it, it seems like we get much more participation when we have some of our neighborhood events and we have things with our uh, animals and dogs and things like that get to the residents there because that's when they will actually be there, be there, be present, we will be there, uh, my face will be there, I, I, I'm very open, I've got my email, my uh, telephone, everything also available. I want to hear what the residents and what the citizens have to say. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, I think Kevin's exactly right. We um, you have to you have to be where the neighbors are at, right? We're just one big city. We're one big community filled with a lot of neighborhoods. And um, and I, I said in the beginning that if you've seen me once, you've seen me a thousand times. I've been I've been probably one of the most engaged council members uh, on council um, in recent periods. Um, I think that it's important to be engaged with council, with uh, your city and your constituents. I think communicating in creative ways, right? We held the first, the very first live, Facebook Live, if anyone's on Facebook and seen my Facebook Live, you know, it's, it's just different ways to communicate with people. Millennials are, are communicating differently than, than retirees, we get that, right? So we have to engage our, our uh, constituents in different ways and in ways that they hear and that they're receptive to, right? So that's an important piece. And so I think that using all means of, of, of communication, clearly all the postings, all the traditional means, absolutely. All the social media um, uh, approaches, uh, absolutely. Um, and then the emerging uh, means as well. But nothing, nothing beats being right in front of that neighbor, right? Or at the neighborhood meetings, at the city events and so forth, showing that not only am I here and with you, but I'm engaging with you and I'm here to listen and, and at any time, please come up and talk to me. Um, so that's how I will do it. I will follow the same recipe I followed for the last three years and I hope to, uh, to have a whole lot of discussions. Thank you.